It's time now for Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. Ladies and gentlemen, Anison and Kalinos present Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, one of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday at the same time, the famous old investigator takes from his file and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. Tonight's case is entitled, The Case of the Melody of Murder. If you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, try Anison. You'll be amazed at what it does. Many people who have taken it will tell you, I'm quite sure, that its effectiveness and incredibly fast action are simply astounding. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, it contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. Many people listening to me now have at some time or other had an envelope containing Anison tablets given them either by their dentist or physician. These people know it gives incredibly fast relief. So if you want really fast relief from headache, neuritis, or neuralgia pain, try Anison. For most effective relief, use only as directed. It is spelled A-N-A-C-I-N, and you can get it at any drug counter. Now for Mr. Keene and the case of the melody of murder. Our scene opens in a midtown apartment which is occupied at the moment by two people. One of them, a very attractive young girl, is standing at the piano listening to her companion who's playing for her. But as she watches the expert fingers slide lightly over the keys, she doesn't realize that those same fingers will very shortly become an instrument of horror. lovely piece you're playing. One of my favorites. I was thinking of including it in my debut recital next week. Please, why did you change? I wanted to hear you play the rest of it. Why? Why, what's the matter? You... Oh, no. No, don't look at me that way. Please, I... Take your hands off my throat. Take your... You're strangling me. Help! It's 9.30, Mr. Clancy, and Mr. Keene isn't here yet. Well, Mr. Keene should be in his office any minute now, young fella. Take it easy. You say you're his partner, Mr. Clancy? That's right. Well, then maybe you can help me. I can't wait any longer. I... Oh. Here's Mr. Keene now. Oh, good morning, Mike. Sorry I'm late. Good morning, boss. Good thing you weren't any later. This young fellow's been jumping out of his skin waiting for you. You want to see me, young man? Yes, Mr. Keene. My name is Harper. Alan Harper. I... I've come here to ask you to help me find a murderer. Well, sit down, Alan, and try to relax. Relax? How can I relax when my own sister was killed? Strangled to death by a maniac. When did this happen? Three days ago. Well, it must have been when we were on that case in Chicago, Mr. Keene. Oh, yes, Mike. That's why we didn't read about it. Yes. Yes, it happened in my sister's apartment, Mr. Keene, here in New York. Imogene had just returned from Europe. I hadn't even seen her yet. When the police got in touch with me and said they'd found her body. And there were no clues? No trace of the murderer? No, sir. Her body was found lying in front of the piano. That's all. Mr. Keene... Ever since the death of our parents, Imogene and I have been as close as two people could be. We forgot our animosity in the past Animosity? And... You mean you and your sister disliked each other at one time? Well, it was childhood jealousy on my part, that was all. Imogene had always been talented and favored, I guess, by our parents. She played the piano magnificently, and she'd been studying in Europe for the past eight months. I... I have no talent for music or anything else. Go on, Alan. Tell me the rest. That's all there is to tell. She returned to New York to make her debut as a concert pianist. And she was murdered. I want you to know, Mr. Keene, that in spite of the jealousy I once felt towards my sister, I loved her more than anyone else in the world. 
If you'll help me find her murderer, sir, I'll be grateful to you for the rest of my life. I intend to help you, Alan, but I need more information. Now, what about your sister's friends and acquaintances? Do you know of anyone who may have hated her enough to murder her? No, Mr. Keene. Imogene had very few friends. She devoted her life to her music. I have no idea whom she met in Europe, except Lawrence Driscoll. And who is Lawrence Driscoll? He's a concert manager, discoverer of talent. He met Imogene in Paris and returned to New York with her to arrange for her debut. I see. Uh, do you want me to give you Lawrence Driscoll's address, Mr. Keene? He has an office and studio on 57th Street. Yes, put it down on this uh, piece of paper, Alan. Very well, sir. I'm sure that Mr. Driscoll can tell you about the people my sister knew while she was in Europe. You've talked to him, of course. Just once. At police headquarters when we were both questioned about the murder. Oh, uh, put down your own address under Mr. Driscoll's, Alan. All right, sir. I don't live anywhere near Imogene's apartment. My job doesn't pay very much, and I can't afford it. But your sister could, hmm? Well... Imogene and I were both left some money by our folks. I'm afraid I spent mine a little foolishly while she invested hers wisely. I see. That's just about all I have to tell you, Mr. Keene. Except this. If you ever find the man who murdered Imogene, you'd better turn him into the police before I lay my hands on him. We'll let the law take care of the punishment, Alan. And you'll hear from me when I have some word. I'll be waiting, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Keene. Mr. Clancy. Goodbye, Alan. So long, young fella. Well, Alan Harper's a very emotional young man, Mike. Oh, I'll say he is. And as he was talking, boss, I began to think of how many times jealousy was the cause of murder. Yes, I was thinking the same thing, Mike. And how jealous he had been of his sister's musical talents. However, we better get started. I have a feeling we have a lot of ground to cover. Well, what's our first move, sir? We'll pay a visit to Mr. Lawrence Driscoll and see what he knows about the murdered girl and her recent contacts. Come in. What can I do for you, gentlemen? Are you Mr. Driscoll? Yes. My name is Keene. This is my partner, Mike Clancy. Mr. Keene, the famous investigator. I imagine you can guess why we've come to your studio. Sit down, gentlemen, please. You've come to question me about poor Imogene Harper, is that right? Yes, Mr. Driscoll. Well, I'm afraid I can only repeat what I told the police. It was a horrible crime. But I have no inkling of why or by whom it was committed. Oh, perhaps I'd better shut the door to my studio. Professor Graff is in there at the piano... Professor was just as shocked as I was with the news of Imogene's murder, Mr. Keene. Oh, he knew her? I engaged Professor Graff to give Imogene her final instructions before her debut as a concert pianist. Mm. He's a famous piano teacher, and he's played in concerts himself throughout Europe. He's been working for me since my return from Europe. Mike, while I'm talking to Mr. Driscoll, would you go inside and ask Professor Graff to step in here, please? Sure thing, Mr. Keene. Uh, when did you meet Imogene Harper, Mr. Driscoll? About two or three months ago, Mr. Keene, in Paris. Excuse me, Professor. Yes? Mr. Keene would like to see you in Mr. Driscoll's office. Mr. Keene? Well, I'm his partner, Mike Clancy. We're investigating the murder of Imogene Harper. No, I know nothing about it. Please, I've already seen the police. Well, there's nothing to get excited about, Professor. Mr. Keene, just... Take your hand from my arm. I'm tired of being hounded. What do you think I am, a suspect in this murder? Nobody's accused you of being a suspect, Professor. I, uh, I have an appointment with a pupil, if you'll excuse me. Well, the appointment can wait, mister. This is a murder case. I told you I know nothing. Now leave me alone. Hey, there. Wait. What's going on, Mike? Well, Professor Graff walked out that other door there, Mr. Keene. He wouldn't come in and talk to you. The professor's a very temperamental man, Mr. Clancy. Are you sure you didn't anger him? If you ask me, Mr. Driscoll, that fellow's trying to hide something from us. If he is, you can find out very easily. I can give you his home address. I'd appreciate that, Mr. Driscoll. I'll jot it down in my office. Saints preserve us, Mr. Keene, but that professor acted like I was about to push him into the electric chair. Maybe that's exactly what he's afraid of, Mike. At any rate, we'll see very shortly. Uh, 
is Professor Graff's apartment, Mr. Keene. His name's on the door. Well, ring the bell, Mike. It's possible he may still be out instructing one of his piano pupils. Yes? Is Professor Graff at home? Uh, not yet. Was he expecting you? My name is Keene. This is Mr. Clancy. It's important for us to see him. Well, he should be home any minute now. I'm his wife. Uh, please come in. Well, thank you, Mrs. Graff. You, you say your business is important, Mr. Keene. Very. But I... What are you doing, Mr. Clancy? Oh, just admiring these pictures on the wall and looking things over. Oh, yes. Well, those pictures were taken years ago when I was a star in Grand Opera. You were an opera singer, Mrs. Graff? Yes, Mr. Keene. I sang all over the world. London, Paris, stuck. Oh, I do wish Mr. Clancy wouldn't go through those things on the table... My husband doesn't like his music to be disturbed. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm just a curious feller, I guess. Yes, well, I, I think I'd better get back to the kitchen. Make yourselves at home. My husband will be here very shortly. We'll wait for him. Sure, in this studio of Professor Graff's is a queer place, Mr. Keene. Look at all them peculiar-looking masks on the walls. Mm, really, the Graff's collect them as a hobby. Well, I'd like to have a look at the rest of the flat, just to see what it... Luella. Luella. What are you doing here? Professor Graff? Well? I'm Mr. Keene. I believe you've met my partner, Mike Clancy. Since you seemed averse to talking to me in Mr. Driscoll's office, I thought we'd come to your home instead. I know nothing about Imogene Harper. She was my pupil for only a few days. There's nothing I can do to help you find her murderer. John! Luella! You mean Imogene Harper is dead? You didn't read about it in the newspapers, Mrs. Graff? Oh, well, I... I seldom read the papers shut up inside this studio all day long, but my husband, John, never told me that... Be quiet, Luella. What are you holding in your hand? Oh, just this, this jar of preserves. I couldn't open it. Well, here, let me have it, Mrs. Graff. I'll open the jar for you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Clancy. It's, it's, it's stuck all right. I, I can't seem to budge it. I... Let uh, Professor Graff try, Mike. What nonsense is this with a jar of preserves? Oh, please, I want all of you to leave now. I have to practice the piano, and I demand absolute quiet. But, John... Oh, give me that jar, Luella. There. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll get to my studio. I've already told the police everything I know about Imogene Harper's murder. Well, we'll be on our way, Mrs. Graff. Mr. Keene, I... Oh, I'm sorry my husband was so short with you. He's a very nervous man. You've got to make allowances. Oh, I assure you, Mrs. Graff, that I do. Good day. Uh, good day, Mr. Keene. Mr. Clancy. So long. Mike, that reserve jar was hard to open, wasn't it? Well, faith, and I couldn't budge it, Mr. Keene. Yet you're a very strong man. A great deal stronger than Professor Graff, I should judge, except in the fingers. The fingers? A pianist often develops very strong fingers, Mike. And if you remember, Imogene Harper was strangled to death. Oh, you're right, boss. Do you think that... Boss, that must be Professor Graff playing the piano. Yes, Mike. I think in searching for Imogene Harper's murderer, we're up against a dangerous maniac who would stop at nothing to protect himself. But who that maniac is still remains to be seen. Just a moment, we'll return to Mr. Keene and the case of the malady of murder. Meanwhile, before you buy any cold remedy, know the facts about the preferred antihistamine wonder drug. Listen to this. Krypton, K-R-I-P-T-I-N. Krypton is the formula preferred by patients over all other antihistamines in the famous Naval Hospital test at Great Lakes, Illinois. Taken at the first sign of a cold, Krypton can stop a cold, not in days, but in hours. Yes, Krypton stops a cold the way no aspirin, quinine, or chest rub could ever do. Recommended by thousands of doctors. Effective for children. No wonder the medical world is excited. No wonder millions who have suffered from colds every year hail a sensational development. For the most spectacular results, take Krypton at the very first sneeze or sniffle. Today at your druggist, get Krypton tablets. Big economy-sized bottle is a wonderful bargain. Fifty tablets, only 98 cents. The handy packet size, 
Ten tablets, only 29 cents. Get Krypton tablets today. Now back to Mr. Keene and the case of the malady of murder. Mr. Keene, the great investigator, and his partner, Mike Clancy, are investigating the murder of pretty Imogene Harper, a young prodigy of the piano who was strangled to death in her apartment. Among the suspects Mr. Keene has under surveillance is Professor John Graff, who was instructing Imogene before her forthcoming piano recital. Now Mr. Keene and Mike have returned to their office where they find Alan Harper, the victim's brother, awaiting them. Mr. Keene, Mr. Keene, I've been waiting here outside your office for you. Oh, we've been busy, Alan, working in your sister's murder. Oh, would you please unlock the office door, Mike? Uh, yes, sir. Come in, Alan. Have you discovered any clues yet, sir? I believe we're progressing. However, judging by your nervousness... I'd say that you yourself just discovered something new. I have, Mr. Keene. After I left your office, I spoke to my sister's lawyer and found out Imogene had withdrawn all her money from the bank two days before she was murdered. Well, sure, and that looks like the beginning of a motive for murder. How much did she withdraw from the bank, Alan? $45,000 in cash and some security. 45000 eh? There wasn't even enough left to pay Imogene's funeral expenses. The lawyer gave me this watch, the only possession of value my sister had left. Let me see that watch, Alan. Oh, here you are, sir. It was given to Imogene by our mother years ago. I believe it's worth two or three hundred dollars. Hmm. How did your attorney get possession of this watch? Oh, the police gave it to him, Mr. Keene. Imogene was wearing it when she was murdered. Well, the glass is cracked, boss. Yes, Mike, and the watch seems to have stopped. It may have been broken when the girl fell to the floor at the time of the murder. Hmm. Here you are, Alan. You found no other clues at all, Mr. Keene? It's too early yet to say. Well, then, I won't take up any more of your time, sir. I'll be at home in case you want to reach me. Oh, oh sorry. Excuse me. There's someone here to see you, Mr. Keene. Oh, come in, Mrs. Graff. You'll hear from me, Alan. Very well, sir. Goodbye. Mr. Keene, may I see you alone, please? In regard to what, Mrs. Graff? My husband, Professor Graff. Anything you want to say could be said in front of my partner, Mike Clancy. I know I shouldn't have come here, Mr. Keene, but my conscience wouldn't let me rest. If my husband is the Antwerp Strangler, I've got to know and prevent someone else from becoming a victim. The Antwerp Strangler? Sans preserve us. What's that? Within the last six months, Mr. Clancy, two young women were murdered in Europe, in Antwerp, Belgium, both by strangulation, and the killer was never found. Yes, I remember those cases, Mrs. Graff. But uh, what do they have to do with your husband? He... He spent seven months in Belgium. And he only returned to the United States a week ago. Just about the time Imogene Harper returned. Huh? I... I wouldn't have become suspicious of my husband, Mr. Keene, if... Oh, if it hadn't been for the way he acted when you came to the house. And then, when Mr. Driscoll told me about the Antwerp Strangler... I... Lawrence Driscoll, the concert manager, told you about it? Yes, he read about it while he was in Europe... He came to our house soon after you left to talk to my husband. John behaved queerly again and stormed out of the house. That's when Mr. Driscoll remembered about the Antwerp Strangler. Mrs. Graff, do you realize you may be placing your husband in a very suspicious light? Yes, I do, Mr. Keene. And it doesn't make you unhappy? I gave up my opera career for John. All our married life I've slaved for him, and he hasn't appreciated it. He only thinks of himself and his piano playing. But I'm going to protect myself now... And if he's the man you're looking for, for Imogene Harper's murder, I... Uh, excuse me. Hello? Mr. Keene. Yes? This is Lawrence Driscoll. I'm in Imogene Harper's apartment, 7 West Avenue. Can you come down here right away? What's happened, Mr. Driscoll? I think I can show you where to find Imogene Harper's murderer. No. <coughs> no, get your hands off my throat. Mr. Driscoll. Stop it. Stop. Mr. Driscoll. 7 West Avenue, Mike, and hurry. A man's life may be at stake. This is it, boss. Well, the door is locked. Break it down, Mike. Wait, I'll let you in. Mr. Keene. Are you all right, Mr. Driscoll? Yes, I, I had a narrow escape, but I was able to fight him off. Who? 
Professor Graff. He's tied up in the next room. Bring him in, Mike. Right, sir. Tell me exactly what happened, Mr. Driscoll. Well, I went over to see Professor Graff this afternoon. I wanted to find out why he'd behaved so queerly when you tried to talk to him. He started to shout at me and ran out. It was then that I thought of a killer known as the Antwerp Strangler. Yes, yes, I've heard about him. Well, then something else occurred to me, Mr. Keene. An appointment Professor Graff had with Imogene Harper on the day she was murdered. She'd phoned me around six that afternoon and said she was taking her last series of piano lessons from him. Go on, Mr. Driscoll. Well, a little while ago, I, I came here to Imogene's apartment to check on it. I found the proof I was looking for. Oh? In her appointment book, she has a notation saying that she had a music lesson with Professor Graff at 6.30 that evening. Uh, the book is right here, Mr. Keene. Hmm. In other words, that places Graff in the apartment around the time of the murder. That's my guess. As I was phoning you a few minutes ago, Professor Graff walked in and attacked me. I managed to get away from him and knocked him out. Then I tied him up and waited for you, Mr. Keene. Here he is, boss. Professor Graff, did you attempt to attack Mr. Driscoll a little while ago? He drove me to it. He called me a murderer. When was this? When he came to my house before. Then you followed me here to Imogene Harper's apartment and tried to add me to your list of victims. I didn't kill her. Why can't people leave me alone? Why do they have to hound me all the time? According to this appointment book, Professor Graff, you were with Imogene Harper at the time of her death. I didn't keep that appointment. I swear I didn't. All right, Mike. Take Professor Graff away. He can tell his story to the police. No, no, please believe me. I didn't kill her. I'm innocent. You'll have your chance to prove that to a judge and jury. Well, I'm glad that's over, Mr. Keene. Are you, Mr. Driscoll? You have no idea what a blow it was to me when Imogene was murdered. She was not only my friend, she had great talent. Yes. Do you play the piano, Mr. Driscoll? Why, yes. I was pretty good at one time, too, Mr. Keene. I noticed your fingers were long and your hands looked strong. Please play something, won't you? Oh, well, I'm not as good as Professor Graff or Imogene, but, uh... <clears throat> Listen, Mr. Keene. Mr. Driscoll, at what time did you say you last spoke to Imogene Harper? Six o'clock, on the night she was murdered. You're sure of that? Oh, positive. Odd. Odd. How do you mean, Mr. Keene? Her wristwatch was broken when she struggled with her attacker, and it stopped at five o'clock. Imogene Harper wasn't alive at six that night. I could have made a mistake. You made several of them, Mr. Driscoll. Even though your plan was well executed. Plan. Your plan, what plan, Mr. Keene? To murder Imogene Harper and place the blame on Professor Graff. Because that's exactly what you did. Only you slipped up on the time. And that will cost you your life in the electric chair. You must be joking, Mr. Keene. You picked a time when you knew Professor Graff had an appointment with Imogene. And you strangled her before that. Afterward, you put a strong suspicion into his wife's mind that he was the Antwerp strangler. And then, as a final touch, you goaded Professor Graf into attacking you to tie him up with a murder completely. And do you think you can prove all that, Mr. Keene? Yes. After I prove what your motive was. Driscoll, I'm going to check every bank account you've ever had. Imogene Harper withdrew $45,000 from her bank just before you murdered her. If I find that amount, and I think I will, deposited in your name recently... That's all the proof I need, Driscoll. Yes. You'll find that money. You're right, Keen. I am the Antwerp Strangler, and this is my melody of murder. I killed Imogene. And the other girls, too. The fools. They all wanted to be great pianists. Geniuses. I told them that getting started in a concert career was expensive. And I took their money, then I put them out of their misery. But Imogene could have saved herself. I wanted her for my wife, and she refused. She could have saved herself. Only temporarily, Driscoll, because your insane, twisted mind would have turned against her sooner or later. <laughs> you said my hands are strong. Well, I'm going to give you a chance to find out how strong they really are. 
I'm going to strangle you, Keen. You, you insane! <laughs> I'm going to kill you, kill you, kill you! Are you all right, Mr. Keen, sir? Yes. A few moments later, Mike and I'd have been finished. Driscoll tried to strangle me. Well, when I heard that piano as I was going downstairs, I thought something was wrong, so I come back, sir. That's why I asked Driscoll to play, Mike. I was hoping it would bring you back. Where is Professor Graff? Well, I handcuffed him to the banister in the hall, sir. Release him at once, Mike. The real Antwerp strangler is lying at our feet, Lawrence Driscoll. Your bullets, Mike, saved the state of trial as well as saving my life. And I think we can inform the police that the mystery of Imogene Harper's murder has been solved. And so Mr. Keene finds the solution to the case of the melody of murder... The next time you're suffering from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, try Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician. And in this way have discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So next time such pain strike, take Anison. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30. And economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. The name is Anison. A-N-A-C-I-N. <laughs> Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel, Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Ann Hummert. Dialogue by Lawrence Clee. Bennett Kilpack plays Mr. Keene. It is on the air every Thursday at this time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday when the kindly old Tracer turns to the innocent flirtation murder case. Stop pains of muscular rheumatism. Now you can forget about piercing, shooting pains of lumbago, muscle aches, and muscular rheumatism. The quick, long-lasting action of heat liniment brings welcome relief to the painful areas. Makes you feel like yourself again. Heat warms and soothes, yet does not burn. Heat starts to penetrate as soon as it is applied. Keeps on working for hours to bring grand relief from pains of lumbago, muscle soreness, and muscular rheumatism. Get heat liniment. Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons, will be on the air next Thursday at this same time. This is Larry Elliott saying goodbye for Mr. Keene and the Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anison and Kalinos, and many other dependable, high-quality drug products. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.